Hey YouTube, it's Cheyenne Lee Bearson here. I am out in the woods with my husband Taylor. We are doing some pre-deer season scouting. We're trying to find ourselves a good spot to put our trail cameras right now. If we find a good spot, put the trail camera up and get some good pictures, we'll be putting our tree stands here in a couple of weeks, um, a little bit before season. So we're probably about a month-ish from opening day right now. I'm just trying to get out there, you know, see what's going on as far as deer sign, trails, tracks rub scrapes so uh we're gonna show you what we're looking for and show you guys how beautiful the florida woods really are let's go This is one of what I'm sure will be many for today. So I'm gonna put this in my backpack and get it out of here because if I don't, nobody else is going to. This is a public management area in Florida. Anybody can come and hunt it, um, you know, as long as it's during season. So something that I like to do before getting out in the woods is go on the maps and pick out a few spots that I like to go check. So it's less walking when we get there. So you can get an aerial and see, okay, there's a flag pond here, too much water, don't want to walk that way. Or, you know, there's a lot of buggy trails here. So you just kind of got to use your head and eyes before actually getting in the woods on the maps to save you some time. It is always crazy to me how many flowers are out here in the swamp that you don't see anywhere else and they are all beautiful. Let me spin around and show you. There we go. Okay, look at this swampy little flower here. We've got... It's oh. <laughs> stuck in the mud. Oh, it's so pretty. There's so many little white and purple flowers. And then, I have no idea what these are. These look like some kind of fruit or seed. I don't know. This. Imagine oh. riding a four-wheeler into that. Or walking and having your thigh snag on that. These are some it's a booby aggressive trap. thorns. Florida doesn't Ooh. want you in these woods. I've seen deer eat a lot of thing, things. Oh, I've seen deer eat a lot of things, soda apples, um, cocoa plums, grapes, briars, stuff like that. But I'm always curious if they eat these pond apples. I have never witnessed a deer eating them. I see them quite often, especially this time of year. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of them in the area of my spot. Um, so I guess this year is going to be the... Oh, thank you, babe. Taylor just picked me this really pretty little purple flower. So there's a ton of them in this spot. And I guess we're going to find out this year if they eat them or not. Because this is where I have pinned. But it's kind of like, you know, there's not much to eat out here. Uh, so if there's fruit, I'm sure they're eating it. I've tried to eat a pond apple. Kind of bland and citrusy. Not... I mean, I guess if I was starving and I was a deer, they'd taste good, but not really great for the everyday consumption for me. We just came across something really exciting. We found a scrape. So this is a buck's way of letting does and other bucks know, hey, I'm in the area. If you're another buck, watch out for me. If you're a doe, come at me. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. Sometimes it can be hard to see um, they make them like under like tree branches sometimes or like under a little covering uh, in the sand. You know, you'll see like leaves scraped up sometimes, but this one's in the sugar sand, so it's a little tougher to see. So here you've got your branches, branches, and then right underneath is a scrape from this buck. Not a huge scrape or anything, but definitely noticeable. Uh, probably my shadow's in it. Okay. 
you should be able to see that. We decided to hold off and not put a trail camera on that scrape. We wanted to walk down the trail, keep following um, the tracks because we were seeing a ton of deer sign. We couldn't tell if they were does or bucks, uh, most likely some bigger does, but we just found a stud buck track. You're gonna see his front two hooves like this, where he's most likely running or trotting, and you'll see the back dew claws right behind it. This is what we call in Florida a big buck track. So you've got, and then back here like this. I have decided to follow that big buck track. Taylor took a different trail. We've only got two trail cameras left, so we gotta be kind of selective with where we're gonna put them. I've still got his tracks. Um, obviously not planning to see him right now. It's pretty much heat of the day. But um, I would like to know where he was going or coming from in hopes of either seeing him or other sign after putting the trail camera. It's not uncommon to see a lot of deer sign as far as tracks, but that track kind of stood out to me. You know, <laughs> the bigger the better. So I'm gonna try to find it. He walked me to the edge of the flag pond. So flag ponds are basically big giant ponds, very swampy, very marshy, uh, can be deep, can be shallow, just depending on what time of year. Right now it's shockingly pretty shallow but we've been in some pretty deep ones before. What I'm thinking is happening is he walked down the edge of the flag pond and maybe he's using this trail back and forth, going in and out of the flag pond. So let's see, I lost the tracks obviously due to the water, but I'm standing on the last ones I've got right now. This is the flag pond. Not a ton of water at the moment, relatively dry but dearly like to use these little thin trails on the edges of them, travel on these. So somewhere in this area is pretty decent. I've set up directly on edges of flag ponds before and it makes for a very, very boring hunt for me because well, let's get real, you can see all the way across the flag pond. So, you know, you sit there and you're staring across the flag pond, staring across, across the flag pond you either see something or you don't and if you see it way on the other side then you feel pretty stupid especially with your bow that's the issue we're scouting for bow season right now so florida it's pretty thick for the most part there's a lot of water I typically don't like to take shots over 30 yards on deer because it's just too risky to get them back um so I typically like to stay under 30 on my shots so there's really no sense in being able to see you know 300 yards if you can only shoot 30. So I liked this spot, but somebody else did too. So we just came across a trail camera. It's really awkward for me always when I, I know I walked by somebody's trail camera because you think about it and you're like, what if I had to go pee just then? And I just, you know, you never know who's watching you. This is what we have found. If this is yours, sorry, you just got us. Uh, we're getting out of here though, because too many people at one spot. On to the next big buck. The best part about this is that poor guy has got me all over his camera, straight Guggen mode, playing with that deer track, like three times. Poor guy, I'm so sorry for the blast of photos, dude. A lot of bones you find when you're scouting. Not many sheds though. This is a uh, bottom jaw to a hog. Look at those front chompers. So it's hard to see on camera for some reason, but this is a good trail going through here. You've got these trees right there that you could sit in. That's a pretty good tree for a climber. And then he's putting his camera right here so that he can capture, that might be a tad bit high, but so that he can capture everything that's coming down this trail, coming across this trail, um, or, you know, basically using this little crossing. Yep. So I'm gonna hold this steady and in place while he goes ahead and straps it up. It's always nice having the two of us do trail cams together. I, we do them in the backyard sometimes, so it's nice to have two people to keep it in the perfect position and then, um, you know, the other one's tying it up. Like you? Yes. Boom. Hold it real quick. Okay. 
Excuse me, sorry for the sweat. <laughs> that looks pretty good. And then we look at its line of view, and it's perfect for that spot. Here we have some cocoa plum. Deer, hogs, birds, they love to eat these. These are white cocoa plums. They also come in purple. These are actually really good. This is a ripe one. These taste delicious. Every time I find them, I usually eat a few, but uh, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you, you gotta get the skin off and then you get this white, white flesh of really good. But there is a huge seed in it. So don't chomp your teeth. Today is starting to feel more like a litter pickup than uh, a deer scouting. You know, if people could just pick up their trash, life would be so much better for all of us. But irresponsible people do irresponsible things and don't worry about the consequences. So that's just my little rant for today. Pick up your trash, people. I've said it a couple times now, but this is the driest year of scouting we've ever had. We're usually need to hit deep water right now. Um, so there's a lot of areas that we typically wouldn't be able to get to because of the water issue that we're now able to go check out. So I found this little finger on the map. It's surrounded by a bunch of flag ponds, which flag ponds are risks for water moccasins, snakes, uh, alligators, stuff like that. So walking in the dark is a little sketchy, but it's pretty dry right now. So I wanna go check it out. My only concern is that this finger is too thick. This is what it looks like on the map. This little finger right here glares pretty bad, but there we go. That little finger is what we're trying to get to. So best case scenario, we get to this finger and it's not super deep water yet. And the woods aren't so thick because some of this gets a little jungly. Like if you see a, a island or a little finger, um, surrounded by a lot of water it's typically pretty thick so trying to find a good trail find a good trail where there's a tree where you can actually get a shot that's going to be our difficult areas so as we walk to this I'm aware that there's a pretty good chance that this is not going to be a usable spot but since we have the ability to go and walk through it without getting soaked and treading water and risk being bit by an alligator or a moccasin so when you look at areas like this this is from a buggy um, but this right here is super dry. Like, look at this. I can step on that and it's not even wet. When I tell you that every year that we scout this spot, we joke and say that we should bring, um, like inner tubes and just like lazy river style it. I'm serious. It is that deep. So having it dry like this, it makes the walking so much easier because it's not all of that drag walking through the water and filling your boots up and, being soaked and, and sketching out, looking down, looking down, looking down, making sure nothing's gonna bite you. So right there, that head, um, you'll see the, the tan flag pond and then the big head of woods behind that is the spot that we're trying to get to. So pretty good little walk, but it'll be worth it hopefully. We're seeing a lot of these snail shells. Uh, we typically see a lot of crawdads, but these are all over the roads because stuff's eating them, but also because it's dry, they're usually in the water. That's a good sign of how dry it is right there. We are at the tip of this finger. It's really thick right here. So what I'm gonna do is most likely Go back to the front of the finger where we first walked in and try to find a spot in there where it's not so thick and you've got some trails running up. I just got lit up by something. I'm going to hope it's ants. It might have been some kind of burning caterpillar because my arm is on fire. We worked our way back out of the finger 
right here this is a tree that my climber would do good on it's a little bit close to the trail for what i would typically like but it's just so thick in here i don't think i'm going to find a more open spot so you've got this trail here we walked all through this it leads into a flag pond and into another island which is good so anything that pushes pressure it's most likely going to push into this head of woods and then you've got this trail here that my tree will be looking down which actually makes a giant loop around the island so pretty much this spot is the funnel area for all the trails that tree not my favorite but sometimes you gotta compromise and hope for the best if i get up in that tree and something comes out too close under me and spooks and i'll know hey too close but um i'm typically pretty still and quiet and i don't smell bad so <laughs> hopefully no issues there before putting a trail camera up there we decided hey let's push out a little bit further and see if we can't get into a more open spot um because I, I just doesn't really dig in that tree that close to the trail which we did find another little crossing just like the other one so we're gonna put the trail camera here because it's a little bit more open um, and I won't be right on top of the trail. This spot, this spot you've got your trail here, you've got your trail going this way and then this big main trail yeah, along here. here. But we've got a lot of, a lot, right, of, right lot of tracks, a lot of sign in this area and is a little bit more open. So for instance, I'll be able to get on that tree and be about 25, 30 yards away from my shots instead of 10 to 15, which is just too close for comfort. Three. Me and Taylor are both getting lit up. We think we got into poison ivy or something because we are on fire, but thankfully this is the last camera we're putting up. So I already got the straps tightened up to get it up on the tree. So I'm gonna slide it to where about, I think it would go. I want it to capture all of this here. So. So I'm going to try to angle it a little bit down. And then we're just going to tighten this up. So as you can see earlier, we were talking about how this is much easier with two people. I don't know if it is. What she doesn't know is the camera's on right now, so we're getting some close-ups. <laughs> So we're going to flip it on, we're going to do a test shot, walk by it, and uh, make sure it picks us up, and then we will be leaving it. But first things first, I'm going to fiddle with this for a little bit longer and really get it secure uh, to make sure we're picking up those deer that come through. Something I really like about this spot is that I'm going to be able to see across and get that thin strip edging of the flag pond. A lot of the times, like I showed you in the earlier video, deer like to walk right on the edge. There's really no point in seeing the whole flag pond if you have your bow. Um, this scenario here, this spot, I am able to see just that little stripping and the trails. So I'm seeing what I can shoot at and that's about it. Here we have a little bobcat track. You can tell it's a bobcat because it doesn't have the claws on it and it's tiny. He's prowling around in this area. We're laughing to ourselves right now because right now it's super dry. Come deer season, if it decides to monsoon the next month, raining every day like it should be, we're gonna be we're gonna have some fun on this walk <laughs> like both of our cameras are in areas that we typically can't get to because of the rain so big risk putting them out uh in those spots right now while it's dry but you know worst case scenario we'll bring our dive gear we'll bring our long fins and we'll just swim to them no biggie i love finding these shells they're so pretty and iridescent um what opened them up and ate it are raccoons the little raccoon tracks look so cute in the mud. They're like little miniature hands. And they are everywhere on this trail as we're on the edge of the flag pond right now. You've got the water. So you've got your snails, your clams, crawfish, basically all the things that raccoons love to forage for and eat. So that's why this trail is loaded with raccoon tracks and their old shells from their meal. 
After a few hours, we decided to salvage what was left of the day and switch management areas to get the best use of the light and time that we had. We're going to put out some more cameras here and show you guys around. And boy, oh boy, is it hot. These huge spiders are everywhere, so we're dodging those as we make our way through. We're coming into a pretty good little thick spot here. Um, we're going to do our best to watch for spiders and snakes in this thick stuff. Taylor has on snake boots. I do not. I asked for snake boots for my birthday that's in about two weeks um, because the ones I had last year I just was not a fan of. They gave me really bad blisters. So hopefully get some new snake boots. Right now I'm just rocking the extra toughs out here. Going through the little thick stuff, thicker trail. We've been seeing a lot of monarch butterflies on this walk so far. And here is why. There is milkweed in the area. This milkweed is actually seeding. Monarch butterflies only lie their, lay their eggs on milkweed. That's their host plant. So if you see this out, just know that's what it is. It's got these... There's many different kinds, but this is just one that's native here. Um, a little red and orange flowers, and here's the seeds. Pretty cool. We are under these beautiful natural wild Florida orange trees. Let's see if I can get closer. There's one on the ground. But glare's pretty bad right now. What we're looking for today specifically are trails, droppings, rubs, which is where when the deer is they shed their horns, they grow new ones, and the new ones have velvet on them. So they scrape that velvet off to get to the, the hard horns underneath. And when they do that, it leaves marks on trees. So you look for that. Um, scrapes on the ground are a way of showing their dominance, their territory. That's what they do when they are approaching mating season or in mating season, uh, which is called the rut. This is wild passion fruit from the passion flower. Here is another butterfly host plant, passion vine, host to Florida's native or Florida's state butterfly, zebra longwing. Here's the first track we've seen, very small, most likely a doe or a little buck. So as you can see, a little fawn or something. We just hit mile one. Uh, we still have quite a ways to go. Something to keep in mind though when you're scouting is don't get too ahead of yourself. Don't get too far into the woods um, and find a spot back there because if you go too far, sometimes at four in the morning, you're not gonna wanna walk two and a half miles to your spot. Um, and then you have to consider getting your deer out of there, which was something we did not, well, probably about three or four years ago. I shot a deer three and a half miles into the woods and me and Taylor drug that thing all night long by ourselves. It was pretty miserable and we were really sore after, so keep that in mind. You feel good with just your backpack, but when you've got your climber, your bow, your backpack, and potentially a deer, that's a lot of elements on a long walk. Look how cool this is. I don't know what lives in there, but pretty cool little house. Skull of unsure. What do you guys think this is? Ooh, kind of creepy. Wait, wait. Okay, I'm not skilled, but what do you think this is? It's starting to get a little later in the afternoon, finally cooling down. It was in the mid to high 
90s today very very high humidity because it looked like it was gonna rain all the clouds came over the humidity spiked up and it just got hotter and never rained to cool it down so it was extremely hot um taylor's still looking for a spot right now I'm trying to find him one that's in a good area where he can put it on a good tree get a good shot and where there's not any sign of other people around which believe it or not is a lot harder than it seems Okay guys, we are wrapping up this scouting trip. Pretty productive. We saw a lot of deer sign, picked some spots to put our trail cameras, and saw some wildlife. It was pretty exhausting. Like she said earlier, it's like, it like 95 degrees, 100% humidity. Luckily the sun's about to go down, so it's cooling off a little bit, but... Bugs are starting to come out. We just got tore up by mosquitoes and yeah. had to evacuate the area. Uh, we did see quite a few food sources for deer and a bunch of butterfly host plants. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along and seeing a little bit of the Florida woods and where we plan on setting up. See you later. Don't thanks forget, for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Hey, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Let's see how big it really is. Oh, 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 he does not like that, babe. You're He's camera shy. Like, so who would be happy with that crawling down their neck in the dark? Wait, what? What? Can this you, is like James can Bond. Can you do that again? Get under the. There you go. Just, just slide on under. Limbo. No. Oh my gosh, my GoPro is destroyed. Okay, there we go. Here we just dip, dip, dip.